In this video, we'll be using the Riemann definition of definite integral to take a given definite integral and rewrite it into an infinite Riemann sum. Recall that the Riemann definition of definite integral defines delta x as b minus a over n, then the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from, uh, from 1 to n of f of x sub i delta x uh, equals the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So this is the sum of infinitely many rectangles added together to give you the area under a curve. Uh, one addendum to this definition that may help here in just a moment is sort of an expansion on what we mean by x sub i. So x sub i is a value in the interval, um, in a subinterval within delta x, um, and that subinterval is an interval of the interval from a to b. All of which is to say it may help uh, for us to think about x sub i here or really x in general, as being starting at A and then slowly incrementing your way up toward B. So if you think about doing Riemann sums uh, by hand or doing approximations, you start with a small number, A, and you add a little bit and add a little bit and add a little bit to eventually work your way up to B, and the add, amount you add is called delta x. So we're literally going to add to this delta x, but we add a certain number of steps, and that number of steps is going to be I. So I1, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4. That'll add a different number of delta x's to go from A as you slowly increment your way up to B for I number of steps, or N number of steps total, but going through I to get there. So this might help, uh, and, and as you'll see, is, is a required part of knowing this definition. We don't really need it to be able to use the definition, but in order to translate and write an integral, uh, and to write a sum from an integral, we will need this part. So an example, uh, write this definite integral as, a, uh, as an infinite Riemann sum. So much of our answer is going to be boilerplate. It's going to be an infinite sum. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a sum from 1 up to n. And the rest of it we need to figure out. Now from the definition of definite integral, we have these two components here. We have a function, and then we have a delta x. So delta x is a little easier to figure out first. In fact, you'll need it uh, first. So let's go ahead and find what delta x is. So that's going to have a function here and then a delta x here. So we're going to go ahead and find that delta x. So just like before, delta x is defined as b minus a over n. We don't know what n is. Notice if you were asked to approximate this, this thing, you'd be given you know, a certain finite number of rectangles or trapezoids. But generically here, uh, b minus a would be 12 minus 4 over some number n, don't know what it is, and that would simplify to 8 over n. So now we have sort of the last part of our Riemann sum here. We're going to have delta x at the very end. So at the very end here, uh, assuming I've budgeted enough space, we're going to have 8 over n. So there's the sort of coda on the end of my definition here. The hard part now is to figure out this, the function right, um, of our variable. Now, the function part may not be too hard. There's a function here. It's called the integrand of the definite integral. And most of it is sort of uh, pretty straightforward, actually, because it's 2 ln of something. And this summation here goes from i up to n. That's the way summations work. Plug in 1, plug in 2, plug in 3, plug in 4, until you get to n, and then add all those results together. So this thing has to involve i somehow in order for this iteration to actually occur. So recall from earlier that I uh, asked you to think about that x sub i was equal to your a value plus delta x times i. Starting number and then adding an increment, and the number of increments iterates. So with that in mind, now that we have some concrete numbers here, in this particular case, a, well, that would be 4, delta x, well, we just got that to be 8 over n a moment ago, and i is your letter of of iteration. So we have, we've actually just created what x is going to be. So right in place there, and I almost budgeted my space right. Someday I'll figure that out. Um, if we replace x with what we just got, so x right here is going to be replaced with what we just calculated 4x down here. So that's going to be 4 plus 8 over ni. So that's a placeholder for x. I've replaced x with this thing. That is a variable quantity. 
as I iterate, one, two, three, four, five, that amount will change, and change is what a variable does, right? That's why it's called a variable. And we have this plus seven here, so let's not forget it, so plus seven. So x, quote unquote, plus seven, and we're done. That highlighter's no good. I knew that. Hope this helps.